Hi everyone, this is Scott and Greg over at Missed Fortune. We're here today to respond a little bit to Dave Ramsey's video where he talks about life insurance being, quote, terrible and how uh, buy term and invest the difference, uh, how that strategy far outweighs uh, putting your money into cash value life insurance. And, and just to clarify, we actually really agree with Dave Ramsey on, uh, uh, and we, we like what he does for people in terms of getting out of debt, uh, cutting up credit cards, stopping that uh, bad habit of lifestyle. But in this in this case with life insurance, he's just absolutely wrong, but he'll go after it with a vengeance and attack it. Uh, but um, in most of what he says about cash value life insurance, he's just flat out wrong, and that's what we're going to prove here in this video today. So Scott, why don't you go ahead and, and walk us through this to get us started here. First of all, there are a few main points that we want to make about cash value insurance. Uh, the first uh, misconception out there about cash value insurance, uh, such as whole life or universal life, is that it's a terrible cash accumulation tool. First of all, in a way, we absolutely agree with Dave Ramsey when it comes to the way that most agents out there structure a life insurance policy. They don't do it correctly. So that's why it's important for you to understand that you need to work with someone who knows what they're doing. Otherwise, Dave Ramsey is absolutely right. It is a terrible uh, place to put your money. But for us that know how to structure these plans properly, uh, the, there are huge benefits for doing that. Now remember, money inside of a life insurance policy grows tax-free, according to Section 72E of the Internal Revenue Code. The death benefit is paid out income tax-free, according to Section 101A of the Internal Revenue Code, and Section 7702, the code explains how the value inside a policy can be accessed tax-free. That tax-free income can make a huge difference, especially if taxes go up in the future. And this is the question you need to pose to yourself. Are taxes likely to go up, go down, or stay where they are today? And you know, rarely do we ever encounter anyone who doesn't think taxes are going to be going up just because of the rising deficit and, and all that's associated with it. So. Um, okay, so if we take the numbers that Dave Ramsey was using in his example, he said that a, according to a 32-year-old male who's making about $40,000 a year, he should be using about 15% of that income to A, buy a term life policy, and B, uh, buy mutual funds with the rest of it. His, his idea is growth stock mutual funds with all of the money that you would be spending on a cash value life insurance policy. So buy a really cheap term policy and then spend the rest of what you would be putting into a cash value policy. Instead, put that away into a side fund of growth mutual funds. And uh, the idea is that when the term policy runs out in 20 years, the money accumulating in the uh, growth stock mutual funds will have outpaced the death benefit and therefore the death benefit is no longer needed. On the flip side, Dave Ramsey implies that funding a cash value life insurance policy with those same dollars would be a terrible mistake. We're here to set that straight and show you the details as to why he's maybe not correct in this one instance. Okay, well let's compare the two strategies, apples to apples, being as realistic as we can possibly be with two different uh, investment retirement strategies. So first of all, we'll use an example of a father, age 32, with a two-year-old and a four-year-old making $40,000 a year, and as Dave says, uh, will utilize a total of $6,000 a year, or 15% of his income, towards the retirement plan. So let's say a death benefit of $400,000 is purchased using a 20-year level term policy, which is what Dave recommends, which doesn't accumulate any cash value, but is very affordable at about $220 a year. Uh, this would leave about $5,780 a year for the next 20 years to invest into a mutual fund earning 8.5%. Now why 8.5%? Could a mutual fund do better than that? Well, maybe, but just look at the last 10 years. Most people aren't even back to where they started 10 years ago in their mutual fund and IRA 401k strategies. So, you know, we, we really feel like this is pretty uh, pretty realistic comparison for the kind of world we live in now with uh, uh, the kind of things that can happen, 9-11s, uh, the, the volatility in the mil Middle East, and some of those things that just affect us severely overnight almost. So um, some other things we, we must take into account are taxes and costs. 
With mutual funds, there are obviously taxes and fees. Now, a person's combined federal and state tax rate can fall anywhere between about 15% to as high as 42% or more. Um, we're going to be using a 15% tax rate for our illustration purposes here. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at the cash value insurance side. We're going to choose a maximum funded tax advantaged life insurance policy uh, utilizing an indexed universal life product. Now we use indexed universal life because it's linked to an index such as the S&P 500. Now we also look at companies that have high ratings and have long-term records. The company we'll talk about today has actually been around for over 130 years. Also based on historical averages, this company has averaged over an 8.5% return each year. Now this strategy actually provides a minimum death benefit in this scenario that we're talking about today for a 32-year-old male of $588,000. Obviously more than the $400,000 that Dave Ramsey talks about. But $588,000 is actually in accordance to the tax rules of TEFRA from 1982 and DEFRA from 1984. So again, one of the good points that Dave makes is that there is a cost to having an insurance policy. So today we're going to use everything net after cost. We're going to be as fair and open about all of the costs to have an insurance policy as much as possible. But like Dave says, and like we agree, that if it's not structured properly, it will not work. And this is where it starts to become more and more important with the costs. That if it's structured properly, we will have the smallest cost possible. Okay, so in quick summary, on the left side here, we're buying an inexpensive term policy and socking away the rest into growth stock mutual funds for 20 years, earning an average of 8.5% rate of return. There are no guarantees with these funds, and there'll be taxes they're earned with regular fees and costs that we're accounting for. Now, on the right side, we'll be putting in all $6,000 into a maximum funded indexed universal life policy, also averaging 8.5% based on history, which does have many guarantees built in and also allows us to participate in any growth that the market experiences up to a capped amount, but it also gives us floors or guarantees so that we don't lose to any market volatility if the market were just to take a dive in any given year. So, for example, in Dave's video... Uh, right before the crash of 2008, the stock market was at 12,000 points. But we all know that within the matter of months after that, the uh, market dropped 50%. Well, if you have a guarantee, that means that you would not experience any loss in that downturn. The money will grow tax-free and it can be accessed tax-free and will also factor in all the costs associated with this policy. So if we fast forward 20 years down the road, as Dave stated in his video, at age 52, when the term policy ends, the mutual fund should easily have more than the death benefit amount. So according to Dave, we don't need that death benefit, and that's why we did a 20-year level term. In reality, however, even if the mutual fund did manage to get a consistent 8.5% rate of return, when accounting for taxes and fees, this individual would have a net after-tax value of 222000 obviously less than the $400,000 death benefit that we just let go. And at this point, the death benefit would be gone. Now, the life insurance, on the other hand, in 20 years' time, the cash accumulation is up to $233,000, uh, which, is, which is more than the mutual funds, but he still has a death benefit of $588,000. And if he were to pass away at this point, his heirs or his family would receive $588,000. Okay, now let's stop funding both of these plans now at age 52. And let's let him coast until age 65, when we need to start pulling out retirement income. The buy term and invest the difference plan on the left side still has no death benefit. But if we continue to earn 8.5% rate of return every year, would have $482,000 in accumulation, which because his money is in a mutual fund is still heavily exposed to market volatility, recessions, and other negative impacts. Now, because we have structured this life insurance policy properly, we have a cash value of $679,000. And because of TEFRA and DEFRA, which state that we can never have more cash value than death benefit, we now have a death benefit of $828,000. So if he were to pass away at age 65, he would actually pass on 
$828,000 tax-free to his family. In each of these plans, the left and the right start to pull out the same amount, a net income of $53,500 per year. The plan on the left, Dave Ramsey's buy term and invest the difference plan, would be out of money by age 77. At age 77, he'd have no death benefit, no income, and no money. And just to keep in mind, the average life expectancy for the average male is age 85. Now, the maximum funded policy on the right, however, would have a cash value of $654,000 at this point, a death benefit of $732,000, and would be able to continue taking out income of $53,500 until age 100 when the cash value would finally run out. To put this into perspective for you, that's an extra 24 years of additional income a total of an extra $1,284,000 of retirement resources above and beyond what the buy term and invest the difference strategy would yield. While the strategy on the right gets to participate in the indexing feature, which provides protection from market exposure, while at the same time allowing participation when the market goes up, and all the while providing for an additional death benefit that the strategy on the left loses at age 52, nearly five decades before our strategy on the right finally runs out of money. Now again, we understand why most financial professionals don't like cash value life insurance, but in reality, it's because they simply don't know very much about it, let alone how to structure it properly for cash accumulation. We do this every single day for our clients, providing peace of mind because there's protection from market loss while maximizing in a liquid and safe way their retirement resources. To understand how we do this or to see how it would actually look for your specific situation, please feel free to email or call us or visit our website at www.mistfortune.com. That's M-I-S-S-E-D fortune.com.